A prolonged career marked with lots of film and TV roles, Martha Heyer rightfully earned the spotlight through her supporting roles. Her luxurious house was once featured in Life magazine, after which it got robbed while Heyer was at a party. In today's video, we'll see how this glamorous Oscar-nominated actress lived through her life. Early life and the step towards a career in the making. Martha Heyer was born August 10, 1924 in Fort Worth, Texas to Julian Capers Heyer and Agnes Rebecca. Her family was well off and she had two sisters, Agnes Ann and Jean. Her father was an attorney and judge who was also a respected member of the Methodist Church. She finished her high school knowing what she wanted in life. Her love for acting saw her become a student at Northwestern University where she earned a degree in drama. She joined the Pi Beta Phi sorority where she shared a wonderful time with actress Patricia Neal to whom she revealed her interest in the movies. Her ambition led her to join Pasadena Playhouse in California where she honed her skills in acting to take further steps towards the path that would eventually help her lead a successful career in films and TV. Rejection from Paramount and 21st Century Fox Having not yet received a green signal from the likes of Paramount and 21st Century Fox, Martha Heyer eventually earned her first entry into the movie career with the opportunity provided through her signing with one of the Big Five studios of Hollywood's golden age known as RKO Pictures. In 1946, her career finally took a slow start when she went on to be uncredited in the very first three movies of her career. This, however, changed when she finally received credited roles, leading her to be cast in a series of B-movies for a few years. Her appearances in both film and TV opened for her a path to pursuing and receiving greater roles, which would help her claim her worth in the growing industry. Some came running, and the journey ahead. Heyer had a short-lived marriage with the famous producer and director C. Ray Stahl, which allowed her the opportunity to work in the movies produced by him. Their marriage lasted only three years. They divorced in 1954 because Heyer felt that he wasn't affectionate enough towards her. Heyer would remain unmarried for the next 12 years. By 1954, the glamorous Heyer finally reached the best years of her life when she took a shift from a woman with brown hair to a woman with dyed blonde hair. The sudden shift would finally make her fit the character of a snooty, socialite, and strong woman. The cool and pretty Martha Heyer would now be likened with the elegance of Grace Kelly. In fact, she was once called Universal's answer to Grace Kelly. After working as the supporting actress in the star-studded Oscar-winning movie Sabrina in 1954, the brightest moment for Martha Heyer came in the year 1958. Her supporting role in the movie Some Came Running, where she played the role of a teacher alongside Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Shirley MacLaine made her a stellar sensation and hence led her to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. She lost to Wendy Hiller, who won the award for her performance in the 1958 film Separate Tables. Future Relations and the Fall of Her Career the cool and sophisticated roles that she played on the big screen were bound to find their way in her life. Having criticized several leading men in the industry she worked with, she had opinionated views of mostly all of the people she worked with. One of Heyer's dreams was to be in love with a rich husband, and her dream came true when she ran into Hal Wallace at an airport in 1960. This wasn't their first meeting, and they had, in fact, seen each other at a Hollywood party some years ago. Al Wallace was one of the wealthiest, most famous producers in the industry at the time. The time came when Martha would finally be able to flaunt her luxurious belongings and show her exquisite lifestyle, which would even be featured in magazines. Pictures of her house, which was located in Hollywood, were published in the May 4, 1959 issue of Life magazine, and while she was at a party, it was robbed just a few weeks after it was featured in the magazine. Once her career started to take the fall and only few of her movies would now be well-received, she finally decided to marry Hal Wallace in 1966. Her transition towards smaller roles and her focus towards the ritzy lifestyle with Hal Wallace allowed Heyer to finally feel content with her career and she believed it was time for her to slowly move towards retirement from the film industry. She finished her acting career with the last movie in 1973, The Day of the Wolves, after which she continued her role on TV until 1974 and even wrote a screenplay for a movie starring John Wayne and Katherine Hepburn in 1975. The Change of Faith and the Life After 
Pyre and her family were active in the Methodist church when she was little. Faith had been an important part of her life, but she clearly loved Wallace more because as soon as she married him, she converted from Christianity to Judaism. She often blamed her husband for not letting her indulge in her favorite hobby, spending money on things she didn't need. Despite that, Hire and Wallace were happy together, and they sometimes traveled together, allowing Hire to fully enjoy her retirement. In the autobiography written by Hal Wallace in 1980, he described one of his adventures with Hire at Disneyland as childish and exciting. At some point in her life, she had gone under debt due to her expensive lifestyle, which was even unknown to her husband. Her life took a sad turn when Hal Wallace died in 1986 from diabetes. Doing whatever she could to turn her life around and not let her get too upset by her husband's death, she claimed to have become born-again Christian in the 1980s, after which she finally moved to Santa Fe, where she spent the remainder of her life and moved away from all the spotlight. She was tired of the fame and wanted to get away from it all. She said, When you live with fame as a day-to-day -day reality, the allure of privacy and anonymity is as strong as the desire for fame for those who never had it. Finding My Way and Death In 1990, her autobiography, Finding My Way, a Hollywood memoir, was released in which she described her life from a young hopeful starlet to a commendable supporting actress who eventually finds spiritual awakenings during her long and tired life. She was perhaps more affected by the death of her husband than she let on. In 2014, Martha Heyer passed away due to natural causes at the age of 89 in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where she had quietly spent the remainder of her life after the death of her husband. So what's your favorite Martha Heyer film or TV show? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to press the subscribe button.